Alrighty guys, we are back with a, another video and today we're going to be taking a look at the recently launched Deltamate fittings. So these are from Thermal Grizzly. Deltamate is their new water cooling lineup. So recently I received their Deltamate, this is the ROG Astral 5090 block. I received this one, very lucky to get that. They haven't made many, I think this has finally launched. They're doing one in the 5080 Astral, that's their next block, so that's pretty good. So I've received this. This is their first uh, product in their water cooling line, the block for the GPU. I did a build for the G-Skill Computex booth. That came out pretty sick, but now we finally have the fitting. So I'll go over pretty much, not too much to go over really, just some of the style, some of the design elements of the fittings, uh, things like what color options, different sizes and so on. So this video will either interest you or it probably won't because I think fittings to some people might be boring if you're not into water cooling. But for me, I'm really interested in stuff like this. It's really good to see a new player in the water cooling space. Not a lot of companies dive into fittings when they sort of branch out into water cooling or start water cooling. They normally stick to just blocks. There's a lot of companies out there that do blocks only, CPU or GPU, and that's it. But it's good that Delta Mate are doing the whole ecosystem now for the water cooling. They have the blocks, now the fittings. I believe they will have the AMD CPU block, probably Intel. Um, I'm not sure if they'll wait till the next gen to see how that architecture works and the cooling performs on that. And then there's gonna be radiators as well. So what I might do is instead of opening all of these up on film, it's going to be very, very noisy. I will open up a bunch of these, all the different types, cut to that, and then see what type of sort of setups and what different designs they have on these fittings. So Delta Mate have four categories for their new fittings. They have one called fittings, which is your soft or hard shoe fitting. They have rotary, which is the 90 rotary or the T rotary. We don't have anything like 45 or any other angles yet, but we may see them later. Then we have extender, four types, and then we have plug. So one, two, three, four, and I'll go over each of these ones now, so all the fittings are made from brass and they use EPDM for the O-rings, pretty standard there. So looking at the Delta Mate fitting, which are the two here. So we have the hard tube and then the soft tube. Now we get some nice knurling on the side. Seems to be the fitting part or the fitting category, which it's, it's kind of confusing when I keep on talking about fitting. I'm not talking about all of them. I'm talking about Delta Mate's category where they're calling fitting, which are these two. The hard tube and the soft tube are the only ones that have the knurling on the side. There's a little bit of grease. Sometimes when you get fittings, there's a little bit of O-ring grease on them. Uh, the, I'd say the knurling is pretty nice. It's a, I would say, made up of multiple squares. Looks pretty nice, pretty clean. It's not really sort of extruding out there. And it's not the really fine ones you see on other fittings like Bits Power, where they're more looking like a really rough style of sandpaper. I'm not saying I dislike either. It's just a different design. And I think that looks really clean. Just having a look, the extenders, if I grab an extender, that one's actually quite greasy. If I grab an extender and join it on, that's the look you get. So you get the nice clean extender, you get the bottom of the base of the fitting, has no knurling, and then it's just the collar only that has the knurling on it, which looks pretty nice. I will take that off because I'll talk about the extenders later. So at the moment, only for the hard tube, you're looking at 16 millimeter for the outer diameter. For the soft tube, you're looking at 1016. That is it at the moment. I'm trying to push for them to do something like 14. I really do like 14 and maybe even 12. I think they're the three probably standard sizes. 12 are really good for those small form factor builds, but at the moment it is just 16. So let me pull this apart and we can see a little bit in inside. I can take this O-ring out. Okay, so that is the design there. So basically you have your base. So the tube is going to fit flat on this base. Then the collar will go over the tube. And then you have the sort of outer collar that'll go over again. Now with a bit of tubing, we get a better idea. So collar goes over. This rubber sort of O-ring collar goes over and then the fitting goes straight on like so, the base. So with this one, it's a little bit different. There are other brands that are doing this. I think Thermaltake are the other one that does a similar design. 
The actual hard tube doesn't fit into the fitting where you have the multiple O-rings on the inside of the fitting. It sits flush on, I would say, this base. And this is good because if you're doing something like a pass-through panel or uh, any type of panel where you have to fit a bit of tube between two points that are fixed, it's normally quite hard to do that on traditional fittings because you have to try and pop it into one fitting and then bend it into the other fitting because if you make it sort of the exact same size as the outer size fitting, then you don't have it inside. Whereas this one, you can have this flush on one wall, this flush on a separate wall, and then all you have to do is measure the gap between, and that's it. So what you do is you put this on the very edge. I'm not sure how well this is looking on camera. And then you just, I'm actually gonna twist the base because it makes it a little bit easier. And then that locks it in just like that. So super clean simple to use and I haven't tested these yet when it comes to doing a full uh, build with this gear I think I'm gonna wait for the whole Delta mate uh, ecosystem of water cooling so I've got the block um, I know I did do that separate for uh, G skill they really wanted me to push the block for that build to showcase that because it was just launching but I think for the rest of the gear instead of doing a build with the fittings then the, with this block then another build with their CPU block then another build with their radiators I think now I'm going to wait until I get a few more fittings. I've already got the GPU block. I'll wait for the CPU block and I'll probably wait for the radiator so I can do a whole build and see how it all works together. Because mind you, having the same brand of water cooling is probably going to help with sort of fitment things and, and, and stuff like that because they're going to design the blocks and the fittings and the radiator probably to work a little bit better than if you used all different brands together. I'm not saying that all different brands don't work. Obviously, with the same company designing their own ecosystem of gear it's probably going to sort of fit a little bit better together and probably tie in and look a little bit better as well so hard tube soft tube i don't really think i need to explain the soft tube much uh hard tube fittings have evolved over the years with this new design soft tube fittings pretty much exactly the same they have the inner part then the outer part that's it put the soft tube over and then the collar just locks it in now, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but these will only be in black at the moment. It'll be nice to see some other cool colors. I know white is very, very hard to do, so we probably won't see white for a while, or we might not see white at all. Obviously, being new, they're not going to have like 100 SKUs. I'm actually surprised they have this many fittings already. I was only expecting maybe just a few, but they do have quite a few SKUs already. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine SKUs of fittings at the moment. So. You can imagine if they had different colors, uh, it would just really sort of uh, really bulk it out. Now let's move over to the Delta Mate rotary. Now these are probably the most interesting. We have the 90, I'm trying to get a shot on the other camera so you can see it. Nice looking 90. And then we have the T fitting. I don't often use T fittings that much. It's handy if you want to do things like a temp sensor, uh, things like that, a drain port and so on. Now. Both of these have a little cap I can take off. It's not magnetic, a little bit of grease in there. It's not magnetic. It actually sort of pushes in to the eight millimeter X socket on the top. It really looks like a fine, you probably can't even see that is a socket head, but it is in there. I do have one here that I can use and then straight like that. So interesting thing with this, there's no sort of a rotary base like on traditional fittings that normally you hold or turn or that's what you screw in to your item. So whether you're screwing it into a block, uh, a radiator, I might grab this block to demonstrate. So these will sit very, very flush. So what you do is turn it in like so. And then let's get a shot of that. Okay, so that's in there now. So the reason why they have the cap is to lock it in because you don't have that rotary base like on other fittings, you can't really get the grip to lock it in. So they have that. All fittings also use the eight millimeter hex socket, which is this one here. This is just an old one I have. Even things like the extensions all use that. If you want to lock in an extension, you don't normally need to do that because extensions are pretty easy to grip onto. You can just use your hands. Even things like the uh, soft tube fitting has the same X eight millimeter. Soft tube, I do like to tighten a bit if I'm doing it on like a radiator. I do like to tighten them pretty tight because 
if you're using soft tube and soft tube gets uh, sort of wants to turn the other way, fittings can undo because soft tube has the ability to do that if you get a bit of tension on it on the opposite direction. But I wouldn't be screwing things into like acrylic and stuff like that really, really tight with uh, the eight millimeter uh, Allen key. So that's basically in there like that. Now you might be thinking, well, that might fail on quite a few items because obviously it's sitting flush. You don't have that little bit of Z height that other fittings have. So what you are meant to do is grab the seven millimeter extension like this, lock that in. And now that is what makes it more of a traditional fitting. So as you can see, you've got the little bit of extension like that. And then if you were going into something that had a bit of a gap, like, I don't know, like a certain radiator or a certain manifold or something that needed that extra little bit of height, because once you put something on like this, that now gives it that height that you can now clear what whatever it's going into. Because if you don't have that, let me undo this. If you don't have that, you can see that that fitting is pretty much, uh, the soft tube fitting is in line with the base of this rotary. And once you screw that in, it's gonna be completely flush. So add the seven millimeter extender, I would recommend picking up a bunch of those if you do go with the 90 rotary because you may end up needing some of those. So that's pretty cool how that works. And it's kind of confusing. If you keep on turning it, it doesn't actually undo. So you do need the Allen key to undo that seven mil. And you don't have to just use the seven mil, the rotor, the, the extensions come in seven, 10, 14, and 28. So you might find that you want to use something like the 10 instead to get you that little bit of height. So it's kind of good because when I come out from say radiators to come down to say a CPU, normally I use the 90 and then I have to use an extension or two to get that. But now you can just use the exact size extension you need to get that right height. And then I really do like how clean it just runs off from the no knurling at all. There's no uh, other markings on the fittings, no logos. The only logo you'll see are on the 290s I mentioned, the 90 and the T rotary. Very, very faint. I'm not sure if you can even see that. It's the very, very faint Delta Mate logo and I do like that. Like if you have a bunch of these in a build, you are not going to see those at all. Then that caps off. Now looking at the T rotary, same design. The cap just comes off. Aesthetic cap. And then you have access to the uh, eight millimeter hex socket. And then you've got one three quarter and then one on the other side and that's just it and i'll see if i can get a really fine shot of me turning this inside here because then you can see how it actually looks inside when i turn that it's very very you can see how the rotary part works inside so slightly different design on a fitting than what we're probably used to okay so that's the two 90s done and if there's any other fittings you think they or you would like them to produce let me know but i think out of all of this this is probably enough that you would need like you could join two of the 90s to get a uh, double rotary that would look pretty clean it's not going to bulk it out because these are both uh doesn't have that extra uh fitting on the end of it so you wouldn't put this on you can leave that off and then you can get the double rotary it just makes it a little bit easier doing that Maybe something like an offset fitting might be something you might think you'll need. I sometimes use them in builds. It just depends how much of a fine adjustment I can either move the device like the radiator or so on to get something to line up. But the offset fittings always do come in handy. So that's the rotaries. We have the extenders, not too much to talk about these. Uh, as I said earlier, they come in seven, 10, 14 and 28. I think seven is really important, especially on these fittings, but Overall, in a lot of uh, different brands of fittings, I normally always use a uh, seven mil if they do it, because sometimes you just have that fine little adjustment. Like it's easier to use two sevens than if you have a bunch of 14s, because often you may need seven and not 14. But if you use, if you need 14, you can use two sevens. So I always go for the smaller options because you can make bigger options uh, that way. You can't make smaller options if you say had maybe only the 28s and the 14s. If you need a fine adjustment, you're kind of screwed if you only have those and 28 is a pretty big adjustment if you needed to sort of move left or right normally i find i can actually make up that difference using a bend in the tube or something like that but yeah nothing too much to talk about that it's got the standard 
eight uh, millimeter socket head in there, straight through, tighten all those. So it's good that all the fittings use the same uh, Allen key. I probably mentioned that already. And then lastly, we have just the plug. I think a lot of brands, sometimes when they do fittings, they don't even do the plugs, but I really think it's good they do the plug. Uh, aesthetic cap again. So if you did have this on a device, I might actually take this. I don't know what other one it is on here. Take this one off just to get an idea on how that. Let me get that to screw in. There we go. A few little marks on that matte black. So that's how it looks there without the aesthetic cap, just to get a, a different look. And then once you put that on, clean that up. That's how it looks with it on. So it just cleans it up. Not super, super vital, but it's just a nice touch to show that Delta Mate are trying to go that little extra mile to clean things up. And that's really the only, the only fittings you'll need that on are the, the plug fittings or stop fittings, whichever you call them. And then the two rotaries. I don't think you'll need them on anything else because there's no other device or no other fitting that uses a cap. But I think that's pretty much it. Not too much to talk about on these fittings. Um, all the others I have in the packets are just the same quantities of what I've got here. So I got like five or six of each size extender, a bunch of the hard shoe fittings, and then just a bunch of the rotary. So eventually I'll do a full build once I, or once they actually launch more of their products. So CPU block, radiators, I saw a bit of a sneak peek on the radiators. There's some really interesting stuff on those. The CPU box look really cool. I covered the AMD one at Computex earlier this year. Now for price, most of this gear is already on their website. You can already add it to cart. Um, I'm probably sure it ships from Germany somewhere. I'm not sure if there's any in the US. If I do find any resellers or if they're shipping from the US, I'll put it in the link in the description. But for prices on the website I saw, they range from $5. I think the plug would have been the cheapest at $5 and then it ranges up to about $12. $13, I'd probably say the T rotary and the 90 rotary are the most expensive. But yeah, you can see it all on their website. They've got all the dimensions, everything like that. A lot more information about these fittings, but I didn't want this to drag on for too long because it'll probably be only the real keen sort of water cooling enthusiasts who want to learn about this because a lot of people have been following the progress of Thermal Grizzly and their new water cooling lineup. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank Thermal Grizzly for giving me a chance to check out this new gear and we'll see you in the next one.